Hi, I'm Bartlett Durand. I'm the owner of Black Earth Meats. Welcome to our tour of our facility. We'll talk about our history and where we're going. So here at Black Earth Meats, we started with a vision statement, which is pulling the animals off pasture, focused on organics, humanely raised animals and processing. You can see here, we have old Wisconsin. We have the pastures. We even have the old red barn, which is classic in Wisconsin. We deal with artisan cheeses and heritage animals. So we have pasture-raised chickens, uh, Red Angus and Berkshire pork are specialties of ours. And then it's this pride of sausage making and meat cutting is the core of what we're doing. Reconnecting the pride of the farmers and the humanely raised animals and bringing it through individual meat cutters and treating each animal with respect one at a time. What we do here at Black Earth Meats is take this old world pride of sausage making, the old school raising one animal at a time, aggregate our farmers and make a commercial scale business so we can lower the cost for everyone while keeping a very high quality product going into the commerce. This building was designed as a USDA facility but never operated as such until we took over. In 2008 we took over what was then a country meat cutter which was focused on seasonal custom processing. We immediately did a full renovation on the interior, gutted the building down to the bare walls and started from scratch. We worked with a USDA recommended HACCP coordinator and longtime consultant in the industry, Tom Bates. I'm happy to say Tom Bates is now my operations manager. In the process, we immediately got our USDA certification. So we're now licensed by the USDA and the FSIS. We got our USDA organic certification through the state of Iowa Department of Agriculture. We have our animal welfare approved licensing. They come in every year to ensure that we're, our animal handling is, meets their specifications. On top of it, we have the Food Safety Net Service third-party audit for humane handling. So we have four layers of humane handling as far as we process animals, and all of them we pass with flying colors. So we're here at the unloading station for the animals. The trucks will back up here, and the first step is we have a couple gates that swing around and attach to the truck itself, and that creates a self-contained corral. As you'll notice, no one is allowed to unload at all until they first checked in with the office and second have been certified to have humane handling. One of our employees with humane handling training must be here at all times to help them unload. And a lot of the times we will actually do the unloading. So the gates come and they collapse. This gate here will close and lock, keeping the humans safe. And now there's this nice alleyway for the animals to unload. This is all redesigned completely under the principles of Temple Grandin to allow a natural flow for the animals to go through. We have no use of the shock prod. Our pr two primary tools are the little flicker here, which we can flick around behind them, and then just a stout stick that we can keep tapping and moving them along. So we move them up these gates and then they have a nice natural progression into the holding pen. The whole time it's designed that they cannot turn around, that they want to keep moving in one direction, and they don't face any barriers that shock them or scare them or make them want to run. Let's pretend you're a steer. You've just been dropped off from the truck. Now let's follow your path into the facility. Now that we're on in the inside, I'm going to pass the tour off to Tom Bates, the operations manager. So Tom, uh, take us through our holding pens. All right. Um, holding pen design is very simple. It holds 15 to 20 animals based upon size. We use a lot of chutes and gate systems to segregate and handle the cattle. We have a safe zone that I'm standing in right now to keep our people and personnel from getting injured or hurt by the cattle. And it all kind of speaks for itself. Um, as you can see, most of these most of these panels are all collapsible, movable, so we can get to get away from cattle, move cattle any which way we want to. And it's designed to hold either hogs or or beef one one species at a time. First step in the slaughter operation is the knocking pen knock box. And in our knocking pen design, we've also incorporated a head restrainer that the animal's in and when you're going to knock it you've got it secured so you have no misses we hit 100 per 100 we do some security knocks 
but basically we've passed all humane handling by USDA third-party audits. Our system works and it is a good one. After the point of knocking, the animals are rolled out into the dry landing area, which is to my left. We do that, we incorporate this gate up, down, so on. And uh, after the animal hits the dry landing, it's shackled, take it up to the bleeding and head evisceration station. Step two in the process, we're not an on-the-rail system, we're a skinning bed. So the animals are lowered from the bleeding head removal onto the skinning bed. At which point in time we remove the four legs, we open the midline section. We then raise it to half hoist and we do a zero tolerance for fecal and ingesta and we spray a lactic acid as an intervention only. With that being said, and that station being done, the animals then move to the evisceration station, which is here to my right. Inspector watches the evisceration for contamination, inspects the eviscera, inspects all the organs, and says this animal is okay to go farther in our process. And when we have that okay, the animal is then lowered onto the rail, we use a down puller to lessen contamination for airborne hair, dust, uh, manure, whatever you can, whatever's on the outside of a hide, we get rid of it. By using the down puller, it lessens, it just lessens its exposure. Once we've got the hide pulled off, we do a hot water wash on that carcass, which I've already said that we put on a lactic acid and a zero tolerance over here. We've killed a lot of pathogens, we've wounded a lot of pathogens, and by using a hot water wash here, we'll kill and reduce and eliminate even more. And as an example, we'll start out on the skinning bed with a green carcass before any trim of a total plate counts of maybe seven to 800,000. By the time we get it to this point and do another plate count after the hot water wash, we've reduced to usually less than 60,000, if not lower, but always less than 60,000. After the hide's been removed, we split the animal. And it goes down the final trim zero tolerance rail where we remove the spinal cord as part of our SRM removals. We reinspect and trim the carcass for zero tolerance. And then we put it on the hot, the hot scale, weigh it, record tag numbers, hot weight, so forth, so on, owner, identity. And it goes to a cold water wash. We now cold water wash the animal again and apply another 5% or less lactic acid treatment for post chill. The kill floor is staffed by approximately eight people. We, we do not move people from station to station. If we do move anybody, you can only move backward on a station to a certain point. Because after that, you're gonna be contaminating your product. So what we try to achieve is we start out on a dirty end of the kill floor, and each step we get progressively cleaner until we get it into the cooler and everything is clean, and that includes the personnel. They wash down between each, between each, each beef, sterilize, knives, so forth, so on. And even if they're totally washed down, they're looking good, it doesn't matter. People working on a skinning bed that are exposed to hides are not allowed to step forward to an evisceration station where that apron can touch an exposed carcass and you have a lot of unforeseen pathogens that you don't kill with just rinsing with 180 water. So we just don't do that. You can fall back to a dirty station, but you can't step forward to a cleaner station. By proper staffing on this kill floor, we can achieve a beef every six minutes. Our own protocols, our own procedures, limit us to one beef every six minutes. USDA that is here at all times during slaughter operations on oversight, so forth and so on, they have no problem with our, with our speed of one every six minutes. By staffing this plant with eight people, we can run an efficient kill floor, we can put one animal through every six minutes, and we continually get cleaner as we go from one step to the next. Uh, this is a pretty st simple step in the operation. It's called a drip cooler, a pre-chill, storage cooler, you know, we, we refer to it as a pre-chill. 
In the pre-till, it's manned by one person during production hours from the slaughter floor. He basically sorts, segregates, spaces cattle or hogs, whatever the case may be, monitors the cooler for condensation. And, that, and that's it. That's all we do in this room. This is our aging cooler or dry cooler, shall we call it. Um, we maintain temperature in this at 36 degrees or less. This, ca this cooler will hold anywhere from 65 to 70 head to cattle. Um, from there, they're just staged for processing. We're here in the processing room. and it's, it's, it's a large room. We set it up every morning depending upon what we're doing. Anywhere from uh, commercial processing, portion cutting, private labeling, fabrication of pork or beef. What you're looking at behind me right now is a commercial enterprise. We're boning conventional cows for a customer that wants, uh, I believe it's 20 head boned out. All he wants is 85% lean and tenderloins. That's all we're doing. Everything else is being blended into 85% lean combos. On pork production, it goes pretty much the same as the beef production, as I stated. We do it commercially for customer specifications. Portion cut line we can set up at the same time that we're doing a commercial beef line. We can also set up a pork line and a beef line at the same time and keep everything segregated. USDA is happy with us. We do organics before we do any conventional. We try and do conventional all day long or we try and do it organics all day long. We try not to co-mingle anything. But if we do, we always do the organic first and then the conventional. Um, I don't know if you've got this on film or not, but up above my head there's all kinds of clipboards, so forth, so on. The top row is denoted for the slaughter floor. We've got an operational sanitation, pre-operational sanitation, zero tolerance, humane handling, livestock unloading, our kill sheet that we denote age, ownership, hot weight, lactic acid mixing and verifications. And all those daily clipboards, everyone goes to a different station, everybody has a different job, everybody's responsible for it, and then we verify. Everything we do gets verified once a day by the floor supervisor, which in most cases is me. That being said, uh, there's also a lot of other records that we post. USDA wants, a, wants something, they do weekly record reviews, they want to see daily production sheets, they want to see pre-operational sanitations. We're a small plant, we're always busy. Therefore, everything we keep exposed for the day, for the week, for the month, possibly up to six months. So any inspector can say, I want to see this. They don't even have to ask me. They can just walk in my office. They can look at a clipboard. They can find what they need. They can take it down. They can review it. I only ask that they put it back where they found it and don't take it out of the office. They're very good about that, by the way. But this is basically where it starts every morning with record reviews and sanitation reports going up, new and empties, and then the people come grab the form that they need and take it and do it and bring it back. So it's pretty simple. It's just real simple. Here at Black Earth Meats, what our focus has been and what we've accomplished is scaling up our entire operation. So we have a full production capacity in this plant and we aggregate from a number of farmers. So we keep a very high level of production going through which keeps costs down, yet maintains the quality of the animals and the final product every step of the way. Thank you for coming on this tour with us. You can visit us online at www.blackearthmeats.com. Obviously we'd love to have any of you come and visit us right here in the heart of Black Earth, which is just west of Madison. It took us a full year to renovate the plant and get our systems up and running. It took us another year to train and get the standard operating procedures established. We now have an incredible crew working for us. Uh, we're very efficient and we're ready for doing commercial business. We hope you consider us. Thank you very much.